Hello, my name is Linda Cambeek. Today's study on times and timelines is perhaps the most important concept for you to understand as you are studying God's prophecies in the Bible. I hope you will be blessed by this study. Let's begin our study today by looking at timelines. You know, prophecies in the Bible are really nothing more than God telling us a true story, but in advance of the events in the story really happening. God can see into the future and tells us what will happen before it happens. So prophecy timelines are nothing more than the beginning of the story, the middle of the story, and the end of the story. So we have entitled this little lesson, Timelines in Prophecy. Like every good story, God's true prophecy stories follow a timeline. All God's prophecies follow this pattern of having a timeline. They have a beginning point. They often have one or more middle points. They all have an ending point. And they always progress forward in time. This looks like a very simple concept. But understanding this timeline rule will give you an amazing understanding of prophecy. Let's look at an example of a timeline in chapter 2 of the book of Daniel. Chapter 2 has the prophecy of the metal man and his timeline. In chapter 2, King Nebuchadnezzar has a dream that when he woke up, he couldn't remember. So he demanded his magicians, astrologers, sorcerers, and the Chaldeans to interpret that dream. And they said, well, tell us the dream, and we'll explain it. But he couldn't remember the dream. And the king says, well, you guys are a bunch of charlatans. Off with their heads. When they went to get Daniel and his friends, after prayer, God revealed the dream to an interpretation to the prophet Daniel. Then Daniel explained the dream to Nebuchadnezzar. In the dream, King Nebuchadnezzar sees a statue of a metal man that is constructed of several different metals and clay. The various metals and clay represent a succession of future kingdoms, starting with Nebuchadnezzar and ending with the eternal kingdom that God will set up. This metal man prophecy timeline in Daniel 2 spans a time from King Nebuchadnezzar's head of gold to God setting up his kingdom at the end of time. You can see how it progresses in time. When we understand both the time period of each kingdom and the sequence of events in the prophecy, you can understand a great deal. I'm calling this picture a timeline of the Daniel 2 prophecy. Let's look at some timeline elements in prophecy. God's prophecies contain many time-related elements. Typical time elements are 
a millennium, years, months, weeks, days, hours, time, time, and half a time. My Bible studies have revealed that God uses two different prophecy timing formulas. Sometimes God uses a day equals a year. And sometimes God uses a day equals a day. There are 18 different references to time in the books of Daniel and Revelation. Notice all these different time related. Is there a way to know when one day represents a year and when one day represents a day? You need to stay with me for the next few slides and review this section again if you don't understand it the first few times. I am now going to jump to a prophecy in Revelation 13 about a beast from the sea to show you how I arrived at my understanding that God uses two different prophecy time formulas. I have a six-part video Bible study on the beast from the sea in Revelation 13 that goes into God's two timeline formulas in depth. Look for it. But today I'm asking you to keep an open mind on what I'm about to share with you. Remember, my only goal in jumping to Revelation 13.1 is to show you why I believe some of God's prophecies use a day equals a day formula. The beast in Revelation 13.1 certainly is a strange looking beast. It had seven heads and ten horns with ten crowns and blasphemous names written on its head. Revelation 13.3 says, And I saw that one of his seven heads, as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. So one head was mortally wounded, and the head that was wounded was healed. These are two key points in understanding today's lesson. Revelation 13.1 says, Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on each of his seven heads, notice it's a plural, heads, a blasphemous name. So there were seven blasphemous heads. Now we need to go back to Daniel 7.25. He, the Pope, the little horn, shall speak pompous and blasphemous words against the Most High. One of these seven blasphemous heads is a Pope. So, was the Pope ever mortally wounded? Pope Pius VI was mortally wounded in 1798. General Berthier took Pope Pius VI prisoner, thus breaking the Catholic Church's 1,260 years of stranglehold over Europe. The Pope's mortal wound is well documented in history books. Okay, this timeline is very complicated, and we will be studying it in a future video. But for today's purposes, let's just concentrate on the deadly wound. You can see right here is where the deadly wound was inflicted. 
This happened in 1798, when Berthier took the Pope captive. Well, it started to heal in 1929, when the Vatican was given back to the Pope and the papacy. Is it completely healed now? No, but it's on its way. So how long will God give the Revelation 13, 1 beast its authority? And he, the beast from the sea, was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And he was given authority to continue for 42 months, Revelation 13, 5. Continue for 42 months. Well, 30 days in a month, that would be 30 times 42 equals 1,260 days. And using the prophecy key, one day equals one year, the 1,260 days equals 1,260 years. So if the beast arrives in 2020, he will continue for 1,260 years into the future to the year 3,280 A.D. That's A.D. 2020 plus 1,060 equals 3,280. Now, 3,280 A.D. does not sound like the time of the end to me. Let's use a different prophecy time formula. A day equals a day. Continue for 42 months. So, the 30 days in a month times 42 equals 1,260 days. Using the prophecy key, one day equals one day. The 1,260 days equals... 1,260 days. So if the beast arrives in the year 2020, he will continue for about three and a half years. And this is how I arrive at the conclusion that God uses time formula at one day equals one day during the 1,335 days of the Great Tribulation. Prophecy Time Rule Please watch my future videos and see for yourself how God applies these time rules during the upcoming videos on the Great Tribulation. One day equals one year. It's used prior to the Great Tribulation. One day equals one day. It's used during and after the Great Tribulation. Keep studying your Bible. Earth's time is running out. And surely Jesus is coming soon. May God bless you and your family.